I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Grace Kwan, co-founder at Orca. Grace, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Ashton, thanks so much for having me today. You're very welcome. Let's dive straight into the world of DeFi. Uh, Orca is building some technology that I'm personally quite interested in. Uh, let's just kick off the conversation with just a little bit on what you and your team have been working on at Orca, some of those solutions, and then we'll dive into everything. For sure. Yeah. So if you're not actually familiar with Orca, uh, we are one of the leading DEXs on Solana, and we have a strong focus on user friendliness and simplicity. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds great. And yeah, I definitely um, am liking the transition from all these centralized exchanges towards more decentralized. Um, and I'm not as familiar with the decentralized exchanges on the Solana ecosystem. You know, everyone sort of knows Uniswap by now. Um, and, and I've heard of a few, um, but I'd love to hear, you know, the, the story on how you, um, you know, just were in the blockchain industry and sort of led to starting Orca and, and the need for a DEX in, in the Solana ecosystem. For sure. So it's actually funny you mentioned Uniswap. You know, some people call us the, the Uniswap of Solana, which is something we, we take as a compliment because we really admire Uniswap as a pioneer in the space. Uh, but actually, the, the way Orca started was really organic. Like, I literally moved into a share house, which is like a, a co-living space in Tokyo. And across the hall from me was my co-founder. And I'd been working as an engineer um, and in design for the past several years, nothing to do with crypto. Uh, but my co-founder, Yutaro, was actually uh, working at the Ethereum Foundation at the time. And so there was sort of just natural synergy where he was really eager to build something that could scale to to thousands or millions of users. And I was eager to build something that could do so in an incredibly user-friendly and simple way compared to what existed in crypto. And, and obviously that, that scale and, and focus on actually delivering to everyday users is something that Solana is uniquely good at. Uh, so that's kind of how we came to, to build uh, an AMM on Solana since it also deeply simplifies the trading experience. Mm. That's a great story, Grace, and like a match made in heaven, just moving in beside the Ethereum <laughs> Foundation coders um, to now working on, you know, one of the most innovative technologies in the space. So very cool. I love it. And I like that you mentioned a couple times there about focusing on usability, you know, getting the next millions of people um, into using decentralized exchanges, which, you know, there's a little bit more... Um, responsibility for the users to take control of their own funds and, and make sure that they're trading their assets in a, in a proper way and having a user interface I think is super important um, because I, I use some of the first decentralized exchanges you know over five years ago and and everyone knows that the, the user interfaces were just crap and you could easily lose money by doing something wrong um, and, and and I think it's come a long way since then um, now with that said, you know, how long has Orca been, been actually uh, live and running? So we launched in February of 2021. So our, our little baby whale is a slightly grown up whale now, I guess, as we like to say. It's been a year and a few months, but honestly, it's been incredible to see how, how quickly it's evolved in that time. So I think even though it's only been a year, uh, you know, Orca is often and almost always in the top 10 DEXs by trading volume these mm -hmm. days. So it's both long and short. <laughs> Amazing. And, you know, with decentralized exchanges, often there's no limits on people can just put assets on there. Um, is that the same with Orca where it's fully decentralized and anybody can just add a token address? Or are you mainly seeing, you know, the top Solana uh, assets being traded on Orca? So I would say that that we definitely do see mainly the, the top assets being traded, like Seoul USDC is by far the, the biggest pool by, by volume. Uh, that said, we actually are working on um, implementing what we call community listings, which I like to think is a friendlier way to say what a lot of people call permissionless listings, mm -hmm. uh, so that anyone will be able to, to list any token and that Orca can equally support the long tail of tokens. And mm -hmm. I just finished designing that recently, so really excited mm -hmm. to bring it to fruition. That is exciting. And yeah, I, 
I like that approach with community listings and you know you don't want you, you it's a I find it's a balance between um, having a filter of people listing you know something that's really garbage or like scam like yeah. and, and and having a, a quality filter mm -hmm. you know because when it is a decentralized exchange often people can take advantage of that and, and start listing things that don't have the best reputation yeah, that was a huge priority for us when thinking through what the community listings experience should look like. And so safe to say we do have a plan in place that it's really like a UI level adjustment in terms of how I'm initially thinking about it. But these small UI indicators can make it much clearer to people uh, which token is likely the one that they're actually intending to trade and which ones might be one that's trying to masquerade as a token that they're trying to trade. Uh, so I think it's those little attention to detail that can make something that's fundamentally the same technically be a completely different user experience. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I feel like a lot of people really like Uniswap as a decentralized exchange on Ethereum for the user experience, being that it's so simple. Um, you know, it's, it's a very, very simple UI mm -hmm. with just like uh, a few buttons in the middle, but that also sort of limits the functionality as well. You know, you can't do limit orders and, and mm -hmm. sort of advanced order books or anything yeah. like that. Um, where are you finding the balance of functionality and usability with Orca? Orca does also, similar to Uniswap, aim to be really a primitive and a liquidity layer for the wider Solana ecosystem. So in that sense, we are not trying to build out all of the possible functionality right now. You know, we do have a fairly lean team. And while it is possible, of course, to do limit orders on a concentrated liquidity AMM, it's not something that we're currently focusing on as like a first class uh, UI level um, addition. That said, uh, we're already through our, our brand new builders program in which we're giving grants to folks uh, to up, up to 200 100,000 Orca to, to build protocols, seeing a lot of people starting to already build lots of these more um, composed or some people would say DeFi 2.0 type protocols on top of Orca. Mm -hmm. That said, we have added certain features to our interface, which our users do really love. For example, you'll see that our liquidity provision flow, if you actually try out Whirlpools, our concentrated liquidity pools are a bit more step-by-step. -step. They provide more information about the actual like APR you'll receive, for example. Um, and so we do try to keep to being a fairly pure primitive, but make it the best possible primitive in terms of both our smart contracts, our SDK, and then of course the, the UI. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear, Grayson. Yeah, I think making it more understandable for people to be able to not just trade, but also add liquidity. I feel like there's millions of people in crypto yeah. that, um, you know, they, they if they haven't tried a, a DEX or maybe they've tried it once, yeah. um, they're still scared of like, you know, adding liquidity, using multiple tokens, trying to figure out um, what their and their APY might be, but also if there's going to be in permanent loss and, and what are the risks involved in, in putting liquidity into a DEX. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to be honest with you, Ash, and they should be scared because there are real risks associated. And, and this isn't something that anyone should just come and toss their life savings into, right? Sure. I think concentrated liquidity provision in particular is an art. And the people who, who get the highest returns are likely people who are spending a lot of time on analysis, who deeply understand market trends. And so I think what will, you know, this is my personal opinion in terms of what will likely happen. Um, but to some degree, like the market making process will still be more democratized than it was in the past in TradFi, in the sense that anybody can come and be a liquidity provider. And in the sense that there will likely be these vaults um, or composed protocols built on top of privacy such as Orca, which allow the, the everyday user to participate in some of the, the upside of market making. Um, but ultimately, it will still be a competitive exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point, Grayson. And, and you're right. You know, um, there, there definitely are risks um, that and more than people think. Um, and, and I like what you said there about sort of making um, making it easier in different ways for people to get involved in maybe ways that are less risky as well. Maybe there's just one-sided or just staking your tokens or somehow being able to get mm -hmm. involved with having less risk. Is that is that something that you're interested in maybe the longer term with Orca, finding other ways for people to get involved into the decks? 
Yeah, well, we definitely want long term to to have everyone be able to take advantage of what Orca offers. That is kind of the, the dream of a primitive. I and mean, primitive is such like a technical term, but ultimately what we want is to build something that's useful for people, right? Whatever that looks like. And mm-hmm. for a lot of people, they're already starting to get use on Orca through these very like accessible move to earn, like play to earn apps, kind of like step in, which un- integrate Orca under the hood. So mm-hmm. they don't even know that they're using Orca but they're getting value out of it, right? And I think in the future that could be extended to the liquidity provision side as well and do have some ideas here, but I'm not ready to give them away just yet. <laughs> I love it. And that's great to hear that, you know, there's there's dApps and, you know, integrations of Orca being used when, when people don't realize it. I feel like that would be a good strategy for expanding out um, the, the awareness and, and just the growth of Orca through not just people going there specifically, but like partnerships yeah. and, and other kind of integrations. Definitely. In that sense, you know, I was actually just kind of hanging out with some Solana team members the other day. And I think we actually have a somewhat similar strategy where in some cases, especially with, for example, appealing to builders, we want to get Orca's name out there and make sure that people like know about Orca as a brand, because that's something we take very seriously as well uh, in terms of like, it, it's a brand that is a little bit playful it's professional but it's also very principled and has a lot of integrity and so it's important for people to know that they're building on orca but for end users it may not ultimately be that important for them to know that the technology that they're using is orca and so the the two-sided marketplace is is a really interesting game to play as a as a builder definitely and you mentioned uh, uh, just a short while ago about the Orca tokens and, and how that sort of integrates into the DEX as well. I would love to know more on the Orca token ecosystem and if there's other ways that that creates a sustainable ecosystem for all the participants. So Orca does have a governance token, the ticker, the ticker is Orca. And uh, yeah, so it's actually, you can use it right now in the brand new governance platform that we launched, uh, which we call like governance V0, because we consider it really a prototype. Uh, The goal of putting that out there was just to to start seeing what ideas the community had, to start making moves towards uh, a more community-led way of of like gathering feedback and of also iterating on the decks itself. Uh, But long term, I'm actually really excited to push the boundaries a bit in terms of like what effective decentralized governance looks like. And I think sometimes, you know, a lot of protocols can run the risk of um, in the rush to to become like as decentralized as possible, also become a little bit headless in terms of like lack of direction. And so I'm really excited for the Orca governance token to really serve as this method of aligning incentives between the community and, and developers and marketers, et cetera, all the folks who will contribute to the continued development of the protocol. Mm-hmm. That's great, Grayson. I like that approach, and I completely agree. You know, my uh, thesis on on fully decentralized DAOs is really the the co-founders and, and the core team who built the protocol. Um, you know, they should sort of ease their way in slowly and not just yeah. give it away to the reins to to the community yeah. who may not know exactly. You know, have the same vision in mind that the core team had had built originally. Um, and and so there's definitely a fine line to walk there in in um, adding, making the, bringing the community in, giving feedback, and making sure that um, it doesn't go totally haywire from you know what the original thesis was of, yeah. of the platform. So that, that's great to hear. Um, now you know we talked a lot a lot about uh, long term vision, different things. There's so many different faucets of, of growth and expansion, um, which is great uh, for Orca. Um, but I, I want to hone into. Um, the summer of 2022 and, and, and the rest of this year, you know, what are some mm-hmm. of the major operational updates and roadmap points that you and your team want to get out for, for the end users on Orca in the near future? Yeah, so there's two major pieces, uh, both of which we've actually touched on already. And so one is really making Whirlpool's the best possible liquidity layer on Solana. So the, the, the protocol is already out there. Uh, we've recently open sourced our smart contract, which is actually 
pretty, I think, pretty big deal given that there aren't many sophisticated smart contracts out on Solana that anyone can look at, including uh, ones that are double audited. And so pretty happy for our community to learn from that. Uh, but there's also improvements that we want to make to get Whirlpools to what we consider like a true MVP. So I think most likely that's going to include things like support for fee tiers, a more sophisticated router, and then of course the community listings project that we talked about, which will allow Whirlpools to be essentially this like long-term self-sustaining primitive. And so that's kind of this first part is making Whirlpools the best and most obvious choice for anyone who wants to have a liquidity solution on Solana. And then the second piece is working on a more effective governance system. So like the V0 that we've put out there is very intentionally minimal, right? It's basically like the Solana provided realms UI and um, some discussion forums. And so what we want to do is take what we learned from that to spend more time hearing from the community and then take a gradual approach to evolving it to something uh, that allows basically Orca to continue adapting and to gather these community contributions that will allow it to be sustaining far, far out. Meanwhile, I guess in the background where I'm still uh, stewing on the, the sort of moonshot ideas, but I think that's unlikely to take fruition in summer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Very cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how uh, those updates come out and, and how the community can get involved and where, um, for the most part, uh, are the community members gathering for Orca and, and how can people get involved with that community? Yeah, Twitter and Discord are definitely the most active places for Orca. So Twitter obviously is where we put out all of our announcements. I'm also pretty active on Twitter myself. So uh, talking about UX, talking about crypto. So if you're interested in any of that, feel free to come and follow us. We are Orca underscore SO on Twitter and I'm Ori the Orca, my, um, I guess you could call it crypto moniker. And over there, I also post a lot of like op-eds talking about kind of DeFi and the future of that. So mm -hmm. something fun there. Uh, Discord is where our community is super active, always sharing lots of ideas. We have amazing community managers from all over the world uh, who even run different language communities. So it's something that we encourage folks from anywhere in the world to, to come and get involved in. And then final plug again for our builders program. So once again, it's a, a grants program for anyone who wants to build some, some protocol on top of Whirlpools. And we have a, actually a lot of ideas for folks who want to get started and build something meaningful on Solana as well. Uh, so all the information is available there on our dev portal at builders.orca.so. Incredible. Thank you so much, Grace. Uh, great to hear that you're also just tapped in to DeFi and posting about that and just growing the Solana ecosystem uh, altogether. I feel like both great additions um, and really just a green check for Orca. I will leave all those community links that you mentioned in the description box below as well. And all the best with all the updates for Orca that, that we talked about today. And let's follow up in the near future. Ashen, thank you so much. Uh, so, super, super fun to be here today.